Tonight I'm going to try to talk about what's the point of our adults' education. It comes out of, uh, of, a, of some work that I've been doing over a, over a number of years. Um, partly, obviously, I am an adult educator, so it is, uh, it, it, it's related to uh, the, the areas of work that I'm responsible for. Um, but also, it, is, uh, uh, it has been come out of some work that I've been doing in uh, some sets of, uh, sets of research. Um, so we've seen it as a, a WEA members dis uh, discussion. I'm not sure how many people here are members. If not, you can join the organisation. We encourage people so to do, and I'll say a little bit about uh, what, what we are. Um, we're the largest provider of adult education probably in England, and with we, we that um, mainly because thanks very much. Uh, with that mainly because um, we're the the only sort of significant national provider of further education. Most further education colleges, if you think about it, are located in their in their particular area. So the fact that we cover all uh, of England and Scotland uh, makes us a pretty big organisation. We have about sixty five thousand students every year. Um, come on courses with us and sometimes that rises up to about 100,000 depending upon uh, uh, how we do it in that particular, in that particular year. Uh, we run a range of courses, um, uh, particularly around community learning. We don't, usually don't own any of our own venues, so we run in places like this or community centres or uh, in schools or in council offices or wherever we can get a room big enough to try and run uh, community education. And we do education particularly around sort of uh, needs and issues in the community, a lot of leisure learning, uh, quite a bit of academic uh, learning as well, and, and a range of learning that's about developing things like employability, as you'd expect, and skills uh, that people need uh, for their, their lives, and a lot about developing confidence. We're particularly concerned with those people whose first experience of education was not that great. Um, and what we're, what we're interested in is, is reintroducing and giving people a second chance uh, to learn much of, the, uh, much of the time. So we're trying to sort of uh, uh, build, a, and, and as a consequence, we are often working with adults, particularly from, we work from with 19 clubs, but, but, but with adults from typically about 25 up to about 95 um, would be uh, the types of people that we, that we work with. Okay, so that's a little bit about us. I've said a, a bit about who I am. Um, so, uh, welcome and who we are, really. Who, who is it? Who here are uh, adult education students? One? Is that two? Are you up there? Oh, we've got a couple. Three? Uh, good? Yeah. Uh, four? Yeah. Five? Yeah. It's growing. <laughs> More adult education <laughs> students. Oh, who here are um, Who here are adult educators? Yeah, yeah. Three as well. Yeah. Good. Five students and educators. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, anybody associated with the WEA? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have been. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, who's associated with museums, libraries, galleries, or other organisations? Uh, yeah. uh, such organisations, yeah. cultural yeah. venues, that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. There's a lot of mixed hats here, isn't there? There's the. Uh, uh, and anybody associated with the community organisation? Uh, again. Uh, and who's associated with the housing trust? Okay, so there's a, there's, a, there's a kind of mixture of things in. Would it make sense just for people to say very briefly who they are and where they come from, starting with you? Phil O'Brien, WEA. Vanessa Matsu, I work for the Health Agency, BHA, and the Manchester Open Network. Okay. Uh, I'm Mary Adams, and I work with the private healthcare company. Okay. I'm Jo Ward, I'm sort of wearing two hats. Um, I'm here kind of representing Northwest Museums Partnership. And also, um, Adult Learners Week Awards Champion and Regional Coordinator for Awards. Okay. Name's Clive Asgill, um, very talented at many, many things. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that, Clive, I've just seen the hands go up on everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm here uh, representing the Youth Village. The Youth Village, did you say? Yeah. Uh, Tony from the Youth Village. What did you say first? Name? I'm Tony. Tony, yeah. right, Tony. Yeah. I'm Dave Powell, Chief of the City, South County. Uh, David Denhay, I'm a volunteer with the WEA and I'm a non-exec director here at City Set. Okay. I'm Bernie Connor, um, I'm a community development worker in Trafford, but I'm here personally on a, a PGCA in okay. lifelong learning. So. Okay. I'm Elaine Hutchings, I work for the WEA. I'm Alison Ronan, I work at Manchester Meds uh, in the Youth and Community Work Department. Oh, okay. I'm a WEA volunteer. I also work for the Pakistan Community Centre in Oldham. Uh, I'm Rohan and I work for the WEA. Good morning, Thank you. Uh, you just missed the, the 
you don't, your only prize for coming late is you just have to immediately say who you are without having to do anybody else. Pulled in second. Sorry, say again. Mick Sheldon. Mick Sheldon. Mick Sheldon. Yes. Thank you. Well, I'm the bogger old bargain. <laughs> did you get a bargain, though? I did get a bargain. You've got a lot of bogger anyway. <laughs> Associations here that I didn't pick up. There were sort of things, any trade unions or that sort of stuff. Or, no? Okay. Just sort of get us thinking about it. So what I'm trying to do today is to start us thinking about the wider context for uh, adult learning. And, I, and what I'm hoping to do is also to share with you some research I was doing recently uh, about what adult learning has become. Uh, particularly, not not in the sense of uh, there are a number of HE. Uh, people here, not in the sense of higher education or universities, but particularly in the area that funds the WEA, which is the further education sector and covers adult and community learning as, uh, as well. Um, I'll, I'll, I want to sort of start to explain something about how I and others have, have begun to, to think it could be different, we've sort of, uh, and, what, and possibly why we started to, to do that. Tell you some of the features of, a, of what an interesting adult experience, might, adult education experience might be, and fits in with some of the things that I've been exploring and uh, writing about, and getting a reasonably good press and a lot of people coming back to me and talking to me about how they uh, they find that uh, useful. Uh, and then thinking about how it might happen in real classes, because very often it's all very well talking about these things in the uh, in the uh, discussions of adult educators and their supporters, but quite a different thing to try to do them in community venues in. Uh, community classes, and so we, we wanted to think about how that might happen. And I suppose I'm, I'm, I am ending up, you might expect me to do this given that I'm an adult educator, to uh, end up suggesting that adult education might have a point after all. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. Um, so I just thought I'll sort of thought I might start off with trying to think about what's going on in, in education, and in particular, I'm sort of thinking about the sorts of things that form. Not necessarily the headlines, but the types of, of um, environment in which adult education is working. So I suppose the first point is that, that um, uh, despite the, the view that, that uh, education is a great leveller and can bring uh, uh, and can uh, provide for social mobility, um, the, the way that education works is not about equality so much as about the claim equality of opportunity. And I'm going to. Uh, uh, discuss really whether it, whether we think that that is realistic. Um, I, I think that the system has become very much about um, emphasising wealth in a variety of ways. I think it's right through through uh, from what the way that young people are certainly some of the young people I'm talking to are responding to me about the messages that they might get out of school and uh, and, and other places, um, but also about the policy directions in terms of. of the only sorts of valuable types of education, I'll say a bit more about this in a bit, are the types of things that might lead people into gainful and useful employment, whatever we might call that, and I'll be saying something about that too. Um, and it seems to me that, it's, that, that there's an emphasis on, the, on, on, on a kind of um, an optimism that going through this process that we call education will lead one into the, the possibility of highly paid and rewarding work. And it seems to me that there's an obvious contradiction that, that, that whilst that's the, the offer, the, the, the reality seems to be about this, the possibility of, of, it, of receiving highly paid and rewarding work receding more and more out of sight, and particularly for, the, the, for many of the communities that the WEA uh, uh, works in and for many of the people who come, into, uh, who come into our classes. There's an emphasis right across the system on, on individualism and individualised uh, uh, approaches to, um, to the way that we do teach and learn. Some of which have got some basis. I'm not uh, suggesting that, some, that, that none of these things are useful, but things. If, if you're a teacher, you're dealing with uh, things like the. Um I'm sorry, it's, it's all right. Sorry. The, uh, if you're a teacher, you're dealing with, with things like the, the um, uh, individual learning plans, and uh, you're dealing with uh, attempts to try to uh, to try to. Um, uh, ensure that we're organising our courses so that they respond to the needs of each individual within the class. And I suppose one of the things that I'm beginning to think about is we're, we're, when I started this job about 30 odd years ago, um, that 
that sometimes then we emphasise the idea of working together and collectively more than we do now, and that, that, that in sometimes the, the, the work that we do on individualism, we might have lost something of an emphasis on how we might work together and as, uh, as communities. There, there is, and generally speaking, there's a set of things that are supportive about modularisation. It seems to me entirely sensible that we sort of break learning down into smaller uh, modules and that we work uh, 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 around it. Um, however, one of the things that seems to me that's happening out of that is I'm seeing particularly uh, younger people and younger uh, students um, that I'm coming across kind of almost compartmentalise their learning so that they've got a set of things that they learn in this box here and a set of things that they learn in this box here. The two boxes are related but they're unable to tell me about those relationships and I'm wondering why that uh, 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 that might be. There's been a big standards agenda and it's professionalised adult learning since the 1980s. What that means is that we're required to have qualifications in order to do uh, teaching. I'm interested in that and I'm interested in it because I sometimes think that another way of thinking about that is it, is, is it kind of, it, it may be about a middle classification, uh, if there's such a word, there isn't, the, of, um, uh, of adult learning. Um, and, it, and in that sense, I'm sort of, I'm wanting to uh, uh, to, to sort of think about whether that, that makes sense. In, in Liverpool in the 1980s, well I live in Liverpool by the way, they, they, in Liverpool in the 1980s the WEA started a programme called Second Chance to Learn, um, which had a, a massive impact upon bringing uh, people for adults, uh, older adults from working class communities into higher education. Um, and one of the guys who started it is a, quite a well known adult educator now, a guy called Martin Yarnett. Um, the, uh, he's, one of his principles was that the people who taught on it shouldn't be teachers. Just thought it was interesting that you sort of think that began, it was partly about their response to, or the, to, to the people who they were teaching and how they worked with them. And, and then there's the sorts of stuff that the WEA has done. We do loads of things where we work in the communities and you come across brilliant, brilliant community activists and leaders and all the rest of it. Uh, and, you, and often they want to be engaged with you in running education and I want them to too. And if I've got them locked out of edu education because they've got to have a certificate before they can start teaching, to me it sort of loses something in, in terms of education. Of course I want people to develop their skills as they teach with us, but often I want entrance routes that are there. So there's some things about standard, uh, standard, uh, uh, standards agendas that have lost me something of the reach into communities that I used to, uh, used to have. Inspection regimes, obviously, put, 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 you, you worked the inspection regime on the Ryan right now as the quality manager for the WEA helping to get us ready for what is the biggest Ofsted inspection in the country when they inspect, uh, when they inspect us. Um, it's a nightmare and there's loads of things that go, that go on and you, you've obviously got to get ready for it, but they're there. Uh, and, 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 and sometimes they've made pressures around the direction of education which I want to, to talk about. I suppose my, my main thing, and I'll say a lot more about this, is that broad education is in decline. In a lot of cases, many subjects are simply not available to study. Um, and what we've got instead is a huge, huge growth of what I'm calling the skills narrative. The idea that Britain and any other major European and Western country can develop its wealth by developing the skills of its, uh, the skills of its people as a, as a primary, uh, uh, as, as a primary um, method uh, of developing the, uh, uh, the, the country's economy. Um, I think I'm going to argue, I don't know whether I'm going to argue it tonight, I definitely argue elsewhere, that the, that, the, that the people who are most put who are most likely to put that narrative forward seem to me least likely to believe it, um, and they and I'm sort of I'm sort of believing that they and, and got to a position um, where I um, simply don't agree that skills are the key the, the key requirements that they, we are told they are, or at least ways not the types of skills that we are uh, that we are putting all of our public money. To delivering as a, 